Hello, hungry people, and welcome to the Science of Barbecue and Grilling with Meathead, presented by Kingsford. Hi there, I'm Jenny Johnson. And I'm Meathead. And today we are cooking decadence, prime rib. Now we're going to show you the technique, and this technique works for all beef roasts. All the information's online at amazingribs.com slash video. We've got here a prime rib of beef, and that is the best hunk of meat on the animal. It's a seven bone section, and it is from along the spine, and it's really tender, really juicy, and really expensive. But before we cook, we need to do a little surgery. Yeah, we want to get rid of the fat. A lot of people think the fat bases the meat, gets into the meat, makes it juicy, but it doesn't. Fat is oil. Meat is 75% water. Oil and water don't mix. The fat's just going to run off, and if you leave it on, people are going to cut it off when they sit down at the table. And then we lose the crust. All the flavoring is gone. Let's get cutting. So we're going to cut off all this fat. Now, it's going to give you a heart attack when you see what I'm done, because you pay so much for this meat, but a huge percentage of it is fat. But believe me, this makes the meal better. Look at all that waste. Now, let's take a look at what we've got here. This here is the eye of the ribeye, or the longissimus dorsi, and then this is the spinalis dorsi, or the rib cap. It's sort of crescent shaped, and it lays across the top here. And if you peel this off, it looks like a salmon fillet, and it's the best muscle on the animal. And you might even peel that off and grill it up as a steak and just cook the eye of the ribeye. But we're going to cook them both together today. Time to deal with the bones. Okay, now this is what a lot of people call a standing rib roast, and they call it that because it stands on the bones. You've got seven bones in here because it lays on top of the ribs. But I'm going to tell you what. We're going to take the bones out. Now, I know a lot of you think that the bones add flavor, but they don't. Bones are made of calcium. That's not flavor. Calcium has no flavor whatsoever. Get so rid of the bones. One of the reasons we're going to get rid of the bones is that they block the heat from getting down to the meat. Uneven cooking. Yeah. We're not going to waste these babies. We're going to cook them for dinner another day. What's your favorite part of the meat? Crust. The crust with all the flavor and the seasoning. Look at how much surface that bone covers, almost half the surface. Now we have more surface, more rub, more crust, more flavor. Mm. Now something else we can do is we can compact this and try to get it as round as possible because if it's round, heat enters it from all sides evenly and it cooks more evenly. Now you've got the best muscles, no fat in the way, even cooking. It's going to be spectacular. One last thing before we start cooking. This is more meat than I really need for the, for the people I'm cooking for tonight. And I love ribeye steaks. And this is where ribeye steaks come from. So I'm going to cut a couple of ribeye steaks off of here for dinner tomorrow night. Nice. One. Mmm. Two. But now we need to season. Now if you can, we like to get the salt on a few hours before cooking so it can melt and go in. Salt penetrates meat and it makes the meat hold on to moisture. So we like to go about a half a teaspoon of kosher salt per pound of meat or about half that if you're using regular table salt, a quarter teaspoon. There we go. Okay, and now if we can, we stick this in the fridge for a few hours so the salt will melt and go right down to the center. But for today, we're just going to go right ahead and move on. Next up is the cow crust. This is a mix of seasoning and spices. And guess what? Recipe is online. At amazingribs.com slash videos. A lot of black pepper, some herbs, some other spices, garlic, onion powder, oh, rosemary, hand. thyme. OK. Now we're ready to cook. Now we are ready to cook. So here I'm going to dump in some of the regular blue bag Kingsford charcoal. And then I'm going to take some crumpled up newspapers, put it under the chimney, light them, and in about 10 or 15 minutes, they, these will be all white and ready to go. All right, so for a video about different types of charcoal, the best ways to start your fire, and how to use wood for flavor, just go to amazingribs.com videos. 
Today we're using one of my favorite grills, the Hasty Bake. What's so cool about it? The Hasty Bake has a feature that very few grills have. It has a crank over here and it allows me to raise and lower the charcoal bed. And when I raise it up, I get it hotter. And when I lower it down, I get it cooler. And temperature control is key when it comes to cooking anything. Right. And the other thing that we do for temperature control, and we've done in other videos, is we set up in a classic two-zone setup. Over here, we have hot. Over here, we have not. All the coals are against this side. The meat's starting out on the indirect convection side, so it's going to warm gently, and we're going to get a nice, even temperature throughout. We're not going to sear it now. We're going to sear it later, and I'll explain why. Okay, and now I'm going to put in a small handful of wood. What does the wood do? It just gives it another flavor. It's like another instrument in the orchestra. Lovely. We're shooting for about 120 to 130 degrees in the center of this roast. And it takes about 30 minutes per inch to get there. On a four inch piece of ro roast like this, that's about two hours of cooking time. And it's ready. Okay, so temperature's good. We're gonna move it over to the hot coals and we're gonna start to build our crust. And one of the nice things about this grill is we can crank the charcoal up right underneath the meat to build that dark crust. All right, so let's roll it across to the hot coals and it's gonna be roughly about seven minutes on each side. Yeah, five to seven minutes, depends on how hot it is, and it should be really gorgeous. Everybody talks about resting your meat, but Meathead, you're not into it. I want to eat my meat hot. There's not a significant amount more liquid lost when you cut into it while it's hot. Get slicing. Oh, that's just perfect. Oh. That's medium rare, 130 degrees in the center, and ain't that gorgeous? And by the way, you see that juice coming out of there? That is not blood. That's water with a protein called myoglobin. If it was blood, it would be thick and black, and it would coagulate just like your blood. And this is thin and watery and pink, so stop calling it blood. Every time you call it blood, somewhere in Indiana, a teenager becomes a vegetarian. And you can see, that this reverse sear technique gave us a perfect even color from edge to edge. Typically you have brown, tan, pink, and then a little bit of perfect medium rare in the center. But look at that, edge to edge medium rare, it doesn't get any better than that. This is the technique for cooking prime rib. Go for it. Mm. 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 Tender, mm. Meathead? juicy, gorgeous. Perfection. Mm. And remember, cooking for others is an act of love. And the most important part of the meal is not what's on the plate, but who's in the chairs. Mm -hmm.